Welcome to HQ Live. I'm Vicki Hoth from Handy Quilter, and joining me today is Helen Godden, our Handy Quilter ambassador from Australia. Right, <laughs> from down under. G'day. Welcome. <laughs> g'day. Of course, she says g'day. <laughs> well, Helen, you have something that is so fun that I, that's something new to you. Yeah, yeah. So let's get started. Let's talk about what this is all about. Okay. Well, what I've been doing lately, Vicki, is making these quilts using scarves. So these are scarves from scarves. the 70s. Yes, scarves, scarves. Bit of a translation issue there. But these are very typical 70s souvenirs um, back in the day. So these are an acetate scarf. And this one has got Ayers Rock on it, which we now call Uluru. So it also documents a bit of change in our culture where we don't call it Ayers Rock anymore. But it's really interesting because these are all a fixed size and they've got great prints on them. And I've taken to quilting them. Okay, so. I know about those scarves, and they are made of all different fibers, but mostly they're like really slippery. Yes. So I know you're going to talk to us about how to make it work, stabilize it. Yep. But um, I've got uh, some scarves here that Helen has brought, and as we open these up, there's some awesome designs, and Helen is just amazing at her designs and quilting and so this would be fun to to quilt mm -hmm. and well I picked these up um, from thrift shops from secondhand shops so some of these are quite retro and old and right. have different prints than what is currently available okay. so this one would be pretty fun when it's all ironed out you've actually got little squares that you could work into and actually stitch around the ditch of each of those squares it would really make it pop and put some fun designs in each one yeah. of those squares because you are the queen of all those fun designs. Oh, I love having space to fill and this right. is what the scarves do and for And even me. if this was left unquilted so that would be a frame or oh yeah. I'm starting yeah. to yeah. Well, there's heaps of opportunities there. Okay all right so this one is more of your chevron look mm -hmm. which could have you could do what what's your idea for this well you could start off with the ditching but otherwise do more shapes that fit into that chevron idea rather than i tend to work very free form uh -huh. but in here you could even go crazy with your pro stitcher or something like that i could even bring in say black thread onto the lime green and the orange how awesome are those 70s colors yes. looks like mum's old kitchen Yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. But that's a really nice one with the big chevrons. But, and yeah, the chevron is to, is to a today very, design. Very, very current, very um, much the modern quilt style. Okay, yeah. so they're slippery, but I've got another one here that is way slippery. Mm. And mm -hmm. this one, the ones that we've seen so far are a polyester and yes. acetate. Yes, they are. But this one is so drapeable. It's yeah. just, oh. This one is rather lovely. It's a pure silk. But you can see how there's just so much movement that, look at that, right. it just completely distorts. So this yeah. is probably the most important part of uh, quilting on a scarf is to get that stabilised first. And how do you do that? Well, the first thing is to iron that quilt. And you mean iron take it. all of those wrinkles out of yes, it? Yes, you've got to okay. get all that out because, I mean, look at this one. That's, that's no good. Right. So if you press that with your iron, are you using a high heat, low heat, what? You're going to drop that iron down a little bit because it is polyester. It is an acetate. So probably not the cotton setting. You're going to drop that iron back a bit. That temperature down. And just okay. carefully test it first. Okay. And then even using a good... Because you could um, really melt it. Oh, it would melt. It would melt. Okay. So, but otherwise using a, a spritz bottle as well to help. Because sometimes these folds, this scarf might have been folded up in mum's drawer for the last um, 20 years or something. Right. So you're going to have to work to get those uh, creases out first. So is there a problem of using a starch or would that leave spots on it? The water, I noticed as you were pressing... The water was okay. The water was fine. I'm not sure about the starch. Um, I think I would just test it first. Test. Yeah, yeah. test it first. Because, yeah, you don't want to have little water spots yeah, on it. Yeah, that's right. Okay. And so uh, if you were ever to, I'm just going to look if I can read this. 
you can hand wash separately cool iron, cool iron. Mm -hmm. so if you did have some water spots you could press that or you could wash that you could out. wash it absolutely so yeah. definitely you want to look at the little tag yes. on the side to see what yeah. It tells you how That's to. right. Okay, so then what do you use <sighs> with it and under it and around it? And The first step in that stabilizing is an, a lightweight iron-on interfacing. So you can see there's that sort of shiny surface on there, which means it's got the iron-on ability on there. All okay? right, the adhesive the on adhesive, that side. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, lay that down square on my ironing table, hopefully. So this came from Australia. Yes. But you can find this at your quilt shops or at your, where you find your fabric. That same thing with some type, and it, it's not that heavy. No, it's very you light. You don't want it very heavy, no. do you? No, it's just okay. to stop the Light's movement. Now it's scrunched up, so don't do that at home. There we go. Oh, it'll press out. <laughs> <laughs> so then once I've got that flat on my big ironing table, I then put the iron silk scarf on top and try to get it all straight because what can often happen is the... The, um, let's have a look at this sample here. So what you're saying first is you press the wrinkles out before you press yes. it onto this stabilizer. Yes, that's right. Okay. But what can often happen is that the scarf isn't particularly printed square because it didn't matter about that when you were going to just wear it. So they're okay. not always printed very square. And even when you just lay that scarf down on the table, you can contort it that. Shift. You can shift it all sorts of directions. And that silk would really shift. Yeah. So what's important is to have that um, laying down flat and put the scarf on top. I then tend to iron the top section, but I'm only dabbing, not so you're not ru pushing no, it. Okay. No. So I sort of dab along the top, okay. so that I've secured the top edge of the scarf, and then carefully work my way down. So you don't have any bubbles in the center. Yeah. And okay. while that is still warm, you have got an opportunity to lift that scarf and replace it if need be. Okay. But this is probably the hardest part of the whole process: is just getting that nice and square so that you're fairly happy with the scarf being square and flat. Okay. Okay, and then once I've got that, then I'm going to put um, a double layer of batting. So we've got the cotton batting underneath and then I've got a layer of wool. So it could be a cotton poly, like an 80-20. Yep. Or a cotton. Yep. And then the wool. And the wool, I think this is an 80-20? No, that's just 100% wool. 100% wool, yeah. okay. So that's going to give us a great amount of loft in that quilt. Yes. So that when we do our stitching, onto this shiny satin sort of surface, it means we're going to get lots of um, texture and yes. shadows. So every time I stitch, you'll get that, that dark and light coming in and it's gonna really show off the stitching. And this has got such a nice sheen to it's it. It's a beautiful it's color. it's really gonna. It's a real buttery cream color, it's rather lovely. And the lighter color your fabrics, the more your do designs are gonna show. Yeah. Or rather than a black. Yes, that's right. And what's important too, Vicki, is like with this one here, this one was silk. And so depending on what's underneath that, it could really distort your colours. So if you did have, you know, something dark underneath there. Like a dark batting. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah, you can totally completely. tell. So you just got to make, can. Yeah, <laughs> completely make sure that with your batting or whatever interfacing you're using. That so if you want it real crisp, you want a white yeah, you could use underneath white. that. You can see okay. that really lifts it. So just be aware. I mean, look, it's even showing through the pattern there. You know, the silk is really fine. So if you took a piece of fabric and put under it, you'd have some shadowing through. You and could. It might could. be a new stitching. That could be a new thing. I dare you to try that <laughs> on us. Another time. Another time. <laughs> Another time. Okay. So preparing that is quite important. Okay. okay. So let's see what how you've done it here. Right. So can we see I've got all three layers. I've got my backing now and I've got uh, the two layers of batting. Okay. Okay. And then there's my stabilizer and then I've pinned that on. So we did actually use a spray based, just you know, a can of can of some sort of spray based. Okay. Underneath there, but I still like to use my pins because I still don't want that back fabric to flip when I don't want it to and be, you know. So just a little bit of So I still always there. like a few pins and then just a few pins in the middle. We try to minimize those pins because it does make a hole in the fabric and that can be quite a, a large hole. So if it does make a hole, then you make sure you stitch over yeah, it with your thread that's right. to cover I, it. I would try and minimize the hole, the pins in that plain okay. area. Okay, yeah. so I'm going to just put these back here. You and I think we have a different opinion on thread. Because mm -hmm. I was asking Helen, so what type of thread? Would you like a micro quilting thread or would you like a 50 weight thread? She's, oh no, I want a thread that's really going to show. 
And so we chose Omni Thread, mm -hmm. which is a 40 text. Yep. Yep. Or a so 30 text. Not I think sure. I think it's 40. We'll just look. We'll, check. we'll just look. It is a 30 tex. 30, there we which go. Which is about a 40 weight. Yeah, 40 so that's fairly heavy. So that is going to show off my quilting because I've got this lovely plain area here. I want to really show off that style. Um, and I want the fine line, the so fine in the bottom so that it can sync up and allow that stitching and all that loft and yeah. texture up on top. Because you don't do little tiny micro quilting. You're doing some overall feel, but it's not really tiny. I'm money. not really sure yet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, no, that's probably good. not now, micro. speaking of that, let's decide what you want to do. That's right, we need to plan. Right, so I've got a, sh a piece of our preview plastic mm -hmm. paper that we're going to put over this. And now we can see that we have this design here and... An open area. Would you, would you quilt well, you just tell me how you do it. Okay, well I would start out with um, outlining the main features, which in this case is the wattle. This is our Australian um, national flower. Little fluffy little balls on the tree, it causes lots of people to sneeze, but it is our um, Australian national flower, is the wattle. So I would be outlining all that first, and perhaps working into some areas of it with little bubbles. I don't think I could stitch that whole thing with little bubbles. That okay. would just drive me bananas. So just some of them I think I would do. And then I would probably echo the general shapes and then I've got free reign to, to play. So maybe today we can do a little bit of that so mm -hmm. they can see and then because you have got some valuable real estate yeah. here to yeah. put some beautiful designs. That's right, a lot of space there, open area. So it really is, although a vintage scarf, it really is more the, the modern quilt thinking where they're leaving lots of space for the quilting to be a, a main feature of the finished piece. So okay. I love that. Here is a marker. Okay. Now we have the plastic over the top so mm -hmm. it won't get on. So this is where it's, uh, this black edging is really important on the preview paper because it hopefully tells me don't keep drawing in that direction. <laughs> but you don't have any there so be careful. I'll Put just your be arm very, there. Yeah, I'll be very <laughs> careful. So we've got a little dry eraser mm -hmm. and this is a great way to play on here and work out what you might do. Okay, so after I've done some echoing, I think I'm gonna come around with just a whole heap of swirls. Okay. And then maybe some long shapes that echo the wattle kind of shapes. Maybe we'll come in here with some, you know, round, sort of showing off that wattle idea again. Okay. Okay, there's all different things I could do. You could otherwise go with the squareness of this border and create a grid design starting from this corner that has more of a um, geometric and formal look to it. So you could do a grid, start with a grid, and then it would kind of like the grid would fall off and it would just be more free motion. Yeah, you could have that. You could combine all different things, yeah. yeah. And Absolutely. Do you know what you're going to do? No, I don't. <laughs> she doesn't until she starts quilting. So that's the good thing of the preview paper. I can change my mind, um, plan things. I find this particularly good if you were doing a block quilt because then you can see if, if you put that design here, how's it going to work on a different block or a different right. colour. So the preview paper is a really good idea because uh, this is a lot easier than unpicking. <laughs> well, because if you unpick that, you would have those holes you probably... It would be a bit of a mess. It really would damage these fibres because they're not... Um, natural fibres, they are a synthetic, right. so you would start to damage them and particularly on this kind of satin, uh, they might, like a thread could get pulled kind of thing and it, yeah, it's really not an unpick situation. So this preview paper is a great way to sort of get your head started and planning some ideas. Okay, um, I know that in one of the videos that we've done with you, you've talked about a road map type. Mm, that's a good idea. Let's do that on this one. We'll do a road map. Yeah, so okay. do you want to show them what well, that means? Well, a road map. Let's just move this forward, and I'm trying to be very aware <laughs> of my black. Please, please. <laughs> right I'm going to put it. my arm there. So with a road map idea, uh, I would use some sort of a marker on the quilt that I know is going to wash away later or iron away later. So I'd have to test that first okay. to make sure I was using the right marker. Okay. And this isn't the right marker. but That's why we that's have the plastic okay. on top. So for a road map, I would start anywhere on an edge and start to draw curls or big open number sixes. So you're making this road map going yep. someplace in Australia. <laughs> Driving around in circles. <laughs> but what's happening is each of those are connected to the previous one. Okay. okay. And you just keep doing that, 
connecting each one until I'm pretty happy that it's filling the whole area. Okay. So, so I would have more than likely have started this up against my wattle and have it going this oh, okay. way. Okay. But okay. that's okay for mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. So once I've got that road map, I can see a space here. I'm going to add another one here, maybe something here. And I can see that's pretty evenly covered. So now when I'm stitching, I'd probably stitch, say, quarter of an inch or so on mm -hmm. one side and the other. By the time I stitch on one side of that, you're filling it in. You're filling it in and you're getting this continuous curl and all the thinking has already been done for me. I've already done the planning with that road map so as I'm actually quilting it I'm not having to think too much about where am I going next, how am I going to get there. It's actually already planned out for so me. So if this bothers me that it's more open, what would you do? Would well that's, you that's a great opportunity to come back in with a micro quilting. So some little stippling in there, some bubbles. Okay, some and little, the same thing here. Yeah, and okay. all those little areas. And that's where you could really show off with different micro quilting. And this path has given you an artificial way of dividing up the background area. Because I know okay. for some people, okay. having that big open space is pretty scary to launch yes. into. So this has mm -hmm. now divided up that area into small chunks, small areas for them to perhaps practice some different micro fills. Oh wow. Yeah. That would and be then pretty cool. this swirl will be a little bit of a negative space yep. so that let's divide just, it. Let's just check it out. This is this is the kind of unpicking I like to do. Look at that. Okay, so what you're going to be left with there are those open curls mm -hmm. with a fair bit of space and they will really pop up. They'll mm -hmm. really loft up and stand up and then you'll have the dense quilting in between. So that'll look pretty oh, good. Oh, that'll be I'm pretty. liking that. See, the preview paper has worked. I now know what I'm going to quilt. <laughs> well, maybe do we need to mark your quilt so that you can do that and we can actually see it happen? Yeah, I think so. Okay. okay. We'll get it marked and we'll be right back. Okay, Helen, you have marked this out. Yep. And you test, we tested so we tested with a wash away. Yep, this was the wash away. That's the blue one. I think I'd prefer the air erase one. It just goes away with air, with time. But I think the blue just shows up best for the camera today. So we're going to so go ahead. we're going to go. But either of those would be okay. Yeah. And if I had a dark scarf, I couldn't use those. No, they're not going to work on a dark one. So that's where I really love my Panda pencil. This is white but it um, goes on to the dark colours and then it's completely iron away. So it won't just accidentally brush away, it'll iron away. So that's okay. a, a good alternative for the dark fabrics. So whatever mark, marking tool you use, make sure you test it on the edge mm. of your fabric to make sure that it's going to come off yeah. and not leave a, pro you know, leave a problem. Yes. Okay? Yep. So we've done this in the blue mm -hmm. and now well, you are ready. I'm going to do some um, stabilizing here and some detail around the wattle first. Okay. And then that's my road map ready for my um, I love quilting that. out road there. Map. Road Isn't map. Isn't that awesome? Well, it doesn't even need a GPS. You see, you're just, you won't you, lose your yeah, way. Right. You've got your map already worked out for you. So. It works out. Okay. okay. Let's go. Let's start stitching. So you have your open toe foot on. Yes, I do prefer that one, Vicky, because I can just see that bit clearer. It's got that quarter inch clearance at the front there, and I can really see exactly where I'm going to be able to get the detail here. And we're on the Sweet 16, and you could do this on a stand-up machine in a frame. Oh, absolutely. Well. Yeah, I think so you could. So everything um, we're done, talking about here today, yeah. can be applied to a frame. Well, I think they could float the scarf they on the could, frame. They could, but do you feel like it would be stable enough? Maybe not. Maybe not, as long as they pinned it all. Because you know how we talked about how stable this yeah, has to be. Yeah, it's got to be. be it, it can't move. So. Okay. Big hands are a good thing. This is where a pair of gloves could be good okay. if you needed gloves, just to make sure Either you're getting... Either that or some type of a... Yeah, those little pads or something. But I mean, I've got these huge lizard hands. You know that, <laughs> Vicky. So they hang on really nicely. <laughs> so you've also got some pins but you yep. remove the pins out of this area yep. just so we can work in here for now so all right I'm ready to for you to start okay well I'm excited so I've got my needle down needle up and the thread color you've chosen is very complementary to the fabric it's just a slightly darker version than this color because it's a little bit yellowy so um, yeah hold that up yeah it's just an omni thread 
So I'm wanting that to, when it sinks in, it's going to be that little bit darker and give us even more of a shadow effect. Okay. Um, but hopefully it will still stand out enough so that we can really enjoy the patterning. And then we've got some cream um, bo uh, so fine in the bottom, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so then it's going to be a, um, a bottom line. Bottom honey. line, yeah. Okay, let's Here do it. Here we go. It is so fun to watch you quilt. Can I help you get oh, rid of those? Don't you oh, hate you that? Oh, you moved the scissors. We need the scissors. There. We'll get rid of yep. the little threads. There I we can go. Do that they part. drive you crazy, those ones. I need an assistant at home just to cut no, those threads this off is for awesome. me. I'm, That'd be I'm, lovely. So I'm just going to outline this to begin with. So you're running at about 41% okay. needle speed. Yeah. So, you know, if that works for you as a quilter, then go for it. Yep. If you need to go quilt or slower. But my, or hands, aren't, my hands aren't racing, though. Right. You see? You're Fast totally machine. in control. And you're keeping all those stitches consistent. Trying very hard, yes. I do like the thread colour, that's going to look great. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're doing some little circles there. And I'm already thinking there's no way I can do every single one. That would but just... you know what? I can see where you wouldn't need to. If no. you did a few yep. in it, so that they those, pop it, up at uh -huh. different levels. Oh, I yeah. think that's a really good That'd idea. That'd work. That'd work. And this is fairly forgiving because I'm stitching over the pattern, so it's right. It doesn't have to be exactly precise. But I do like the flowing shapes of those leaves. I think they're very mm -hmm. elegant. So I've oh. echoed around that one just to be able to travel somewhere else. So you're not really even staying on those circles not, as you're doing it. You're not just exactly. It's that's all too hard. And even even if I was exactly on the circle, the visual effect would be the same, like exact or not exact. It's still going to have the same impact. It's not about mm -hmm. being exact. It's about the the flow of the design and the overall texture of the design at the end. Okay. Sometimes I think we worry too much about getting everything just precise, yeah. every one of those little circles, but it's not necessary. It's your creative... Yeah. Oh, I, will yeah. Come, I will come back in and do some, but there's definitely okay. no need to do all of them. That, that really would just drive you batty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like that you give us that uh, permission. <laughs> yes. I see that we're getting close to yep, our starting point. Our starting point. So I would do some more in there later on, but I want to show you how I use my road map. All right. Okay? So I'm going to stitch, let's say, about a quarter of an inch, maybe a bit bigger, just whatever it seems to be the right width for me. Because this is going to go away. Those yes. lines are going to yes. go away, and then it'll just puff up. Yeah. So we're going to end up stitching on either side of that blue line. Okay, are we going to Cambry, or are we going to Perth on our roadmap? <laughs> or where are we going on this uh, roadmap? Well, because they're going around, it has to be Canberra, where I'm from. The oh, Canberra. Cap See, I yeah. said it wrong. No, it's okay. I, I forgive you, Vicky. Yes. <laughs> so I'm from the capital of Australia, which is Canberra, and we are well known for our um, roundabouts. Okay, so well that's, there, that's this is why we a have map, a map to my place. Okay. <laughs> a map to my place, okay? Going to see mum. Now, can I take that pin out because I'm getting a little <laughs> nervous. Okay. <laughs> I'm going, you're not going to go back on that, are you? But what's important here is that, oh, um, it, look, the whole yeah, thing out. 
Yeah, it's not bad. But what's important here is to get that flow, that continuous flow, and I didn't stop until there is a stopping point. Okay. Because right now, I do want a complete change of direction, so it's okay that I've stopped there, taken a pin out, drawn breath, and then started again. Blinked. Blinked. <laughs> you want to avoid stopping mid in that beautiful curved line. You want to get that as flowing as possible. What if I do have to stop? If you do have to stop, there is a way of being able to start that line back up again. And what I always say to people is to not move the quilt the split second you put your foot on that pedal. Because the mistake they make is they think, I'm starting up, they put the, and they move the quilt straight away. So and you that's, get a long stitch. That's when you'll get that ugly jump or that long stitch. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is ease the pedal on and then the needle will start to go up and down and then I look and see where I want to go next and just smoothly move in that okay. direction. So that's m particularly important when you're on a curve. So get that needle going okay. and, then, and then move the quilt away. So then it gives you a good sharp point there It too. does, it absolutely does. So I'm not going to be tempted to stop midstream here. I'm going to keep going. And now's when I could stop at that point if I, if I needed to. But you can see I'm going either side of that blue line. Okay. Now it's getting a bit heavy here, Vicky, because oh, that's dragging. I'm not helping you, am I? Well, no, I have to be able to do it myself at home. Okay. But I would rotate that around so that the oh. weight is up here. You know, even though we felt like that was the front of the quilt, you have to be quite prepared to work okay. from the other angle. And we want to make sure that there's no tugs, everything's yep. laying flat. Yep. Okay, ooh, good tip. Okay, but always having the bulk of the quilt up there, even if it does mean you are facing what feels Which like the wrong direction. you wait. So in other words, you didn't just keep stitching and twirl the quilt. No, no, no. You stopped. Rotate. And then rotate, and then you can go that motion. Rotate whilst you're not quilting. Okay. It sounds obvious, but it's just something for people to remember. Because a lot Move. of stitches would have been right there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So okay. now I hold my hands out wide again, check where I'm going, and off I go. stop there because I do need to move those hands. So you don't move your hands while the machine's running? Sometimes I can, but that is certainly something that takes practice. Okay. Let's, you can try it if you like. No, I don't feel game. That's a good tip. <laughs> yeah, I think because this fabric has got a lot of movement, I don't feel game to take one hand off at a time. Okay. I really now, feel like I'm... You, you know, just stopped right there ooh. in the middle of a curve. Oops. So this is a good so show do as me I how to say, do. not as I do. <laughs> so I'm going to start up very slowly with that needle, let it move a little bit. So Wait. that you s keep that continuous. Yeah. So that, well, so that it's sort of almost like getting the inertia over and done with, like getting the movement of the quilt, and then gradually okay. move the quilt into that. So it makes more sense when I do it. Get the needle going, and then gradually move that in. Oh, um, so that now was seamless. Yeah. So now you won't see that stopping. So you're not putting this so close together that if you chose, you may not even need to go in and fill any of those spaces because you've got some yeah. open, you know? But yeah. like, there's, a, well, there's a few options that I'm actually thinking of now in my mind. If I see, can get she this quilts, pin undone. She starts thinking. Uh, that pin was being... Can I help you? That was, oh, he yeah. did a little snag there, yeah, but you're going to cover right. it up with so we're fabric. Have to cover it. Uh, or with thread. There we'll we just go. Fix that's it. good. There we go. See? Oh, phew. That's what happens. Um, so I'm looking at this and thinking I could even double this line up. So I could have a second echo of this line, would look pretty cool. Uh huh. But otherwise, 
it would be nice to perhaps fill those areas. There's all different options there. Okay. And that's the thing with my quilting. Some people do ask, um, do I have the entire thing planned out before I start? And I really don't. I have, I have a starting point. I have a bit of a plan, but you have to be prepared to change it along the way. That's right. what the creative process is, is seeing something happen and decide, but what if I did this? But what if I changed my mind that? And that lends towards well, more opportunities. Well, and when you get part of it quilted, you can tell, you know what, what I thought I wanted to do is not really going to mm. work. Yep. So, so that's okay. You can change your mind. So what you're doing is a lot of framework, that roadmap, yes. that yes. framework Absolutely. first. You're not going to start doing your micro quilting no. at the beginning. No, this is dividing up my background nicely and giving me options. Okay. Yep. Okay. So starting up slowly again and then moving away. Kind of like you do in a car, huh? So it meant to. You're not meant to floor your foot at the traffic lights, Miss Vicky. You're meant to ease off and off, you know, gently, not beep. Really? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't let my kids see. <laughs> <laughs> now here, I'm just going to zap around that little okay. bit of the design. Going to move my hands again, and I am being quite aware of this still has some movement, even though we stabilised it, there's still movement, so okay. I'm really using my hands quite um, well here. So if you struggle with your hands, then then some machine gear, some gloves, yeah. or some type of a or one of those, stabilizer yeah, rings. One of those rings, those gripper rings. Would really good. help yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. Now here, straight away, I'm going to use my whole arm. See that? I automatically put my arm in, and that's going to give me all that control along the length of my arm there to help me move the quilt. Oh, so I tend to use this as the big movement and this as the finer movement. So oh, okay. that's the beauty of the Sweet 16 is I can use my whole arm. I can always tell a new person on their Sweet 16 because they're still in that domestic thinking of being just in oh, here. in the little hoop. Because that's all you can do on a domestic machine is deal with that amount of area at a time. Whereas here I can see the whole quilt and use my whole arm to get that flowing motion. So. I see you have a lot of beautiful jewellery. Does that help too? Yes, yes, and so do these nails. You have to have long, pretty nails. Okay. But unfortunately, they're not mine. They're someone else's. Are you going to give them back <laughs> to them when you're done? They're completely... Anyway, oh, they look beautiful. <laughs> as long as they look good, that's all that that's matters. Right. Okay. So as you can see, I've got around that path, and are you perhaps wondering, is she ever going to get back to the starting point? But because it's a continuous joined line, I will eventually get there. So all of that is taking you right back yeah, to the to other the starting side. point. Yeah. Right. So you okay. drive to my place, and then you can drive back home again okay. without right. a GPS. I like that concept of using your arm a little yeah. bit there. Yep. And you can also see that sometimes I'm ignoring my blue path because I'm just wanting to make sure that whatever I stitch is a lovely flowing line. Right. So sometimes I might ignore it because I'm actually looking at the path that I'm leaving behind. Okay. And I want that path to, to look nice in the end. Wow. So there we go. If you can imagine when the blue's gone, you're left with this lovely that you really can't resist but run your finger along. Cause it's I gonna, know. It's going to be so shiny and flowing through there. So really, we could have finished all of the top of this with this very yep. same design yep. and then done what you did here. Yep. And then maybe kind of done some outlining, quilted some outlining around the wattle. We actually, just like we did here, where we let the wattle be on top of the curl. Which we I thought actually, was really yeah, good. I'm actually thinking could continue that. You could almost have it as imaginary if Imaginary ones, some shadow ones? Well, you have it so that the stitching looks like it's going behind the wattle. Oh, okay. And then that brings that wattle forward. So you have the idea of underlaying and overlapping. So by pushing that, allowing that line there, that wattle is, is on top of the mm -hmm. patterning here. So it gives you more dimensions. Okay. Okay, it's something that when you just do stippling on something or just a flat design, it, it just looks flat. But by having different levels of what is overlapping or underlapping, it gives your quilt far more dimension and interest. Dimension. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. What would you do down here? More of this? I Bring think, this down? I think I would. So the same, what you were just talking about yeah. is as if this were coming around yeah. here and some swirls? I think that's what I would do, yeah. Yep. But um, for now, do you want me to start doing some filling, perhaps? And see what that looks like? I would. 
Okay, Helen, we're we're at a standstill here. We have mm -hmm. to decide some things. We've got too many ideas. Is I the know, trouble. I know. <laughs> I really would love to see you do some sh some echoing back, uh -huh. like you talked about, yeah. and see how that looks. I think it would look good. Can we do that? Yeah. And then okay. I've got another idea for you. Okay. But I know her brain is just <laughs> going around and too around. Too many ideas. You have some fun ideas too. So, so I'm thinking, um, you know, just smaller than a quarter of an inch. Oh. Just, just smaller than a quarter of an inch. Okay. And you're not going to do it on all of it, just on part of just it? Just on part of it. Okay. Oh. I think it's a look good. So are you using like your hopping foot as a guide? Or are you just eyeballing it? I'm just looking at the <gasps> previous... I love that look. The previous stitching. Okay. And see, already I've decided that oh. I like it that little bit narrower than I do here. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. But that's, okay. I think I like that look better. So I don't know what that is, an eighth of an inch? I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah. We'd have a name for that in Australia, but I won't use it here. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yeah. But I'm going to go pretty narrow. I think that looks I good. I like that. Yeah. So I'm actually making it look like I've got a twin needle. Yes, it does. Even though I haven't. And it's not exactly perfect, but as long as it's flowing, that's all that matters. Right. So don't suddenly change your mind because it's not perfect. Just make sure it's flowing. But I'm loving that look. Yes. I can't wait to get rid of that blue now. Oh, oh yeah. my. Oh my. That's going to look great. Oh, that is beautiful. But it's so easy with that road map. See, when it's finished, it's going to be a pretty impressive scroll, and you'll think, wow, how did she plan all that? But that road map is actually not that hard to, right. to establish. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's keep going. So I'm going to get up to here, and I might just stop it up here somewhere. you got to do at least that one swirl, right? I think I want to add some more going in here. Okay, do you, are you going to draw it? I'm going to do a bit more drawing. So I'm just going to move that pin. Do you notice how we say draw or drawing? Drawing. How many R's <laughs> does draw have in it? Uh, Australians <laughs> we have pride fun our, yeah, each other. We pride ourselves on... Um, Adding more R's? Well, no, we usually drop our R's, but it seems in the word drawing we add another R. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I think I'm turning into an American. <laughs> no, no, you're still no. really Aussie. Uh, okay, that's good. That's good. <laughs> So I'm going to add a bit more with my blue marker here. So you're going to go, okay. And let it start to move into that wattle that little bit. So it's underneath the wattle. Yeah, that's the, that's the plan. Oh, I really like that. Yeah. Okay, we have a big blank spot there. Yeah. What are you okay. going to do? Good point. So I will just add a little something there. Okay. Now, would you continue on up here and... Yeah, absolutely, it could. It could, we could continue on here. And that's the beauty of this marker as well. If I do change my mind, I can get rid of the, the marks. I'm looking at a bit of a blank spot there, mm -hmm. so let's make sure we get some nice so curl in there. Under yeah. there, and there's some blank. But I, yeah, I probably wouldn't do here, because this is where we're going to have the wattle. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, Maybe one in here. This is making sense. Yeah, it's it's going to be filling in that background. Okay. And then, of course, you would have come down yeah. or gone around. Yeah. But and I also would have done a lot more of the preliminary stabilizing mm -hmm. through that wattle area first, like I started to do there, because you can see that's quite stable there. Yes, so, it really yeah. is. But there's still more work to be done in there. But you know, mm -hmm. we'll get there. We'll get there. Rome wasn't built in a day, and neither was this scarf. So there we go. So from here, I'm going to start over onto our new spiral. So you can see I'm just going to work my way around that spiral, but when I hit the wattle, weave in amongst. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit like on this road map, I've suddenly come across some um, debris on the road, some, mm -hmm. some road blocks, and I've got to <laughs> maneuver my right. way around them. So 
We really are driving this sweet 16, aren't we? We are. You are. <laughs> I'm going to hold this up. Okay. I'm going to bounce around those while I'm here. Oh, that was tricky how you did that. <laughs> that was really but good. But those stitches are going to be hidden anyway. Right. Need to move my hands there. So just follow the path of the little waddle to get what yep. you need. Might look a bit confusing, but it will come together in the end. This is, I love that you're doing it so continuous. You could break your thread and and do something different, but why when yeah. you've got this opportunity to use the waddle as your as your hidden path. Uh-huh. Oh, now I did forget one. See that? I forgot that one. But that's okay. We'll get to it another way. Okay. Because normally I should have gone out there. Right. But that's okay. Okay. Because it's all hidden anyway. going to go back and do a lot of that work anyway. That's right. I might have to take you home, Miss Vicki. I, I love having an assistant. Yeah, it's I kind of like just watching this. This is like a fish tank, you know, just watching <laughs> Miss Helen's quilt. Oh, look, I love doing, I love my quilting. A good day is a day filled with quilting. And you do a lot of quilting, don't you? I do, I really do. And then if I don't quilt for three or four days, I really miss it. <laughs> like if we go on holidays, that's all very well, but I really want to get home to some quilting. It's it's just like a therapy, it's just a relaxation, it just... Well, so then, because we've had you here for 10 days, mm -hmm. you we've kept her quilting a lot. You've, you've been quite happy, I've been you? I've been quite happy, and you've fed me, and fed, it's all yeah, been good. Yeah. And no housework. It's I love it. <laughs> That's really good. It is good. So now I'm coming back to where I was, to my okay. first section. So I could just continue on with my doubling, but we can see that's going to work really nicely. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Now we talked about, uh, so would you go through this whole thing and do the doubling on everything? Yes, yeah, I would. Okay, so, but you also talked about maybe doing some micro yeah. quilting. And so where would you put that micro quilting? Well, I'm looking at some of these areas that we've sort of created with the curls, and I would definitely check them visually to see that it is a nice shape that I'm going to be emphasizing. So I really like that and that. So then can we work our little double over here and then fill this yeah. up with some? let's do that. Let's work over here. I'm kind of getting the hang of this. in there where they just touch or just mm -hmm. kiss and now you've so got this little blank now spot. I've got a yeah a closed area to now work into so we could do some really fine stippling but I'm thinking because we're going with wattle why don't we go with little bubbles little pebble shapes because that's what that's what wattle is so as you're quilting here and I don't know if people feel this but I'm feeling this zen from you <laughs> I can feel you are in your happy place oh absolutely quilting. absolutely it's yeah. totally coming off of you and oh, I'm like well, there you go she is so happy <laughs> I need to go to my zen <laughs> all right let's fill that in with okay. some fun quilting so I'm not sure how we're going to go with the cream thread how it's going to show up on camera but I think, it will. I think it's going to look great. So we got a good cameraman. Excellent. Okay, let's go with it. Doing a little pebbling. Are you? Are they all going to be the same size? Or are you going to um, vary the uh, sizes? I'm not sure. When no. she gets done, we'll know. Well, exactly. <laughs> 
probably about the same because it, oh that's a big one because <laughs> um, it is a fairly well I guess what I'm now thinking is I don't want there to be just two 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 right. hence I just threw in that larger one. one yeah so yeah oh, that's can better I, yeah have a look at that. that and we'll keep going with that oh yes <laughs> I'm really liking this colour. It's just a slightly darker version of the mm -hmm. of the fabric, so that's good. So you can see how light my hands are. Uh huh. Okay, I'm not grabbing onto this quilt. It's, and that's a really bad habit some people get into. But you have to have that really quite light touch, not not heavy, not scrunching, just a light. So you don't recommend this? Not at all. Not at all. It's distorting your quilt for one, and and your hands are going to get really tense, and before okay. long those shoulders are going to need a massage. So whatever you need to use, whether it be the little pads or the ring ring grippers or okay. machine guns, the gloves, to get that good control. Because my hands are really slippery on this. So you're doing something. Uh, yeah, I've got. Actually, once the machine starts moving, it does move with you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, but these these big hands do help me. I gotta say. And I'm going right up to that stitch line. I'm not I'm not avoiding the stitch line of the edge there. I'm touching it. Okay. I'm trying to touch it so that that will be all filled. boxed yourself in here where are you gonna go are you gonna clip your threads or are you going to travel your way out well my usual thing would be to travel my way out I want to minimize how many ends I have to deal with so truly in if this was a real piece of quilting I would just travel my way out it is a real piece of quilting it is you know what I mean yeah so I would just find a path oh not along the outside line no, you'd actually just, go around your just pebbles. forever just finding a path okay so, so it's disguised Right. And now I can exit out. Yeah, you'd never even know that you... But, and it's cream on cream, so this oh is hiding goodness. quite a bit. Oh my goodness. That is Oh, that's going to look awesome. Beautiful. Lovely. Can we see that with the camera? That is just beautiful. Yeah, I can't wait to get rid of that blue. So I would feel you... Like, I, I know, feel like I know. I <laughs> totally... <laughs> it's I naughty. <laughs> Would you do that same pebbling throughout or would you change to another micro quilting design? I'm thinking I might go with the pebbling because it is what wattle's all about, quite okay. frankly. It really is. Normally I try to avoid doing too much pebbling because it can just do your head in. But I think for this it would be worth the effort of doing that. But the only thing I might change is I might incorporate some of those that are long, elegant leaf shapes. I might not. I think I would just pebble the whole thing. Would you? Because I see right here a really big space mm -hmm. that, would that all be pebbled? I think it might, but would you like me to do something else, Miss Vicky? Mm, no, I don't want you to ruin <laughs> it with something oh, else. Oh no, it's, because it's, it's all good. So, all it right. is pretty. So we talked about maybe putting a grid up here. Mm -hmm. Would Talk, talk me through that grid. Okay. If you well, thought. I think it might be a nice contrast from having the the main element here that takes up, say, you know, a good third of the quilt, and then this background here, and then one other element here. Just rather than it just being more of the same, it might be nice to have a contrast there. So when this is really flowing and curly, that might be nice to have a regular grid, say a cathedral windows kind okay. of pattern. Okay. Okay. Which then does just sort of disappear underneath in it. behind that one. Okay. So then that would be a third layer. You'd have the wattle. This is underneath, and then the cathedral windows underneath again. Like it's against a fence. A backdrop. A backdrop I, I think of it as a... wallpaper. Oh, okay. Because you know you can have all your objects in your house, etc. But behind you is the wallpaper. So can we do it? Yeah, let's do it. And then the last thing I know, we just want to see this all done today, <laughs> don't we? Yeah. And yeah. Well, you know I don't sleep. I'll get it finished tonight. Okay. I'm chained. Right. I'm chained to this machine. I was going to say the ball and chain is here. <laughs> Pretty well. 
So we'll just feed you some food, <laughs> give you a bottle of water every once in a while. Yeah. She doesn't realise that I actually need beer, but that's okay. <laughs> So we're going to work in this area here. So I'm going to make a grid about um, an inch. Now you could get the ruler out, but I'm happy just to freehand this. And that'll go right down to that. But before you put that grid in, would you have done your little double yes. stitching yes. around so that there? Yes, doubling should be there. Okay. So we'll just pretend. So everything will have the double stitching. Yep. So I won't draw the whole grid because it will be here till okay. breakfast, but you know, we'll just... So maybe you would, would you have put some more of the curls in here or would you have actually taken no, that grid I, over? No, I quite like the way that moves across and then across, so okay. I, I actually so would, opened I would that. bring that grid right the way across. I would actually do that. All the way across I there? I think oh. up to about here. Ooh, okay. I'm going to like this. Yeah, so. you're staying here for the night. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe when it is finished, we can show everyone a um, finished, right, a finished we could. photo. But something I am noticing already is that um, distortion there. So we're going to talk about that now I or later. I think you are too. Yeah, so you can already see yeah. that although we ironed this nice and square and flat, there is the distortion of the quilting and we just cannot control that border. Now normally on a quilt you would add that border border afterwards but here it's getting quite distorted so when it comes to finishing this quilt I would be cutting that off and if I really liked this colour I'd be adding a fabric in a similar colour to give us a new border to our quilt. Would you try and find the same type of fabric or would you put a cotton no, on I would, it? No, I'd put a cotton on it. I'd put okay. a cotton, yeah. I wouldn't, okay. I wouldn't try and match it or anything, that's all too hard, but just, I, I do like that tan. But you know what, you could even decide that you liked the green more or something, but it's all too hard to try and keep that because you can already see that's a wobbly line now. Right, Would definitely you'd cut that off. Yeah. Would you, if you would do your pebbles out here, and that would kind of pull that in? But it wouldn't necessarily pull it in evenly. It wouldn't necessarily... Um, finish that off for us. Oh, so, okay. Um, and I know a lot of ladies really like, you know, the whole point of having a sashing or a border is for it to be straight. So if that's not straight, it's going to really disturb right. people's eyes. So I would cut that okay, off. Okay, so I've got your other quilt here. Yep. And it was a satinier acetator. Yep, same sort of thing. Let's pull some, somehow, yep, put let's it over get here. it over there. Yep. And I can, so that you did the very same thing here. Yes. You added a cotton. Yep because this was very distorted and what was important with this one was to try and get that inner square square, square. <laughs> so that it looked good but it completely had the edge being quite distorted so that's something I've learned from doing these is that um, you sort of have to have it in your mind already that probably the border is going to get cut off so that's where one of the other ones we were looking at the silky one it was an all over swirly print it didn't right. have any borders on it so that really would be easier to then just square up and put a binding on. So would you ever consider putting that, squaring that up before you ever started quilting it and putting a cot your cotton on it? Would that stabilize it or you'd wait till it was it's done? It's still going to distort with the quilting because okay. of the nature of this fabric. I mean that's why we use cotton for quilting because it is a flat flat woven More fabric stable. that just stays stays still. You know if we okay. iron it well it stays. This is always going to have that flexibility to it. Yeah. And this is going to be a wall hanging. It's not going yeah. to be a um, no, this is for the gonna, wall. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll it'll lay flat. Yeah. And we'll block it a little bit. Yep. Yeah. You can steam okay. it, and that'll help it a little All right. bit. Yeah. Well, let's get back to this. Okay. Uh, let's take this cold away. Get back to what we have right. planned here. Okay. So I'm going to just put in a few more lines here, and then I'm going to show you cathedral windows. So we'll just do a little bit of those cathedral yeah. windows. So I'm going to double up. So She's this, never going to cut her through. Oh, yeah, there you go. There you go. But this, the doubling it enables me to travel, in actual fact. It looks yeah. great, and it lets me travel there. So I always try to minimize how many times I cut that thread. This is going to be beautiful. So in theory, I should go in there, but I'm just going to scoot okay. across here. So for cathedral windows, on my grid, I just do a little bounce from one intersection to the next. Okay. Because those lines are going to go away too. Absolutely. 
Now you did a freehand grid. Would you would you have used a stencil and measured that? Um, or are you okay with? I'm okay with that, but I know a lot of people aren't. So that's where you can just grab any ruler and just line that up. Um, okay. I'm pretty happy with that, but because I think the by whole the time thing is done, it'll yeah, be I think the whole thing is freehand. So that's really a personal choice. How how much accuracy your eye enjoys, you okay. know. She finished that little echo there. There's a little travel. And with all my quilts, I'm always quite happy to stitch beyond the edge because I know it's going to get caught up in the binding. I, it's more frustrating to have not stitched that last little bit than have to go back to fill one little inch. I, I'd okay. rather stitch beyond it knowing the border and the binding are going to take it in. Okay. I'm helping you. Yeah, because it's your quilt, is it? <laughs> yep. <laughs> so I would actually continue with. Got her convinced of that, don't I? <laughs> no, I no. <laughs> so I'm going to actually do all the verticals eventually. Uh, I'll just for the demonstration go with the horizontal. But you would do all one direction first, okay? And then you come back and do the other direction. So I'll just show you here how that would work. Love it! It's looking great on the shiny, it the is. shiny fabric. Looking excellent. A fun element for that. The bag. Yeah, I think it adds because you've then got good contrast between mm -hmm. very orderly and small and grid-like and then this free flowing. form flowing. Mm -hmm. I think you've got three great elements happening then in that one quilt. I bet you can get through this whole quilt without having to clip your thread and go someplace else. Uh, that's, my, that's my plan. <laughs> that is That would be my plan. Well, we are going to have this finished and I'm sure we'll have it for our viewers mm -hmm. to see. Helen, for sure. this has been so fun and you have given us so many tips and, and ideas on doing our free motion quilting. Excellent. And whether it's on our Sweet 16 or on our stand-up machine, mm -hmm. it is great. So yeah. thank you You're for most coming welcome. To yeah. Austra from Australia, from Australia all and that teaching way. me all of those <laughs> new words. She's going to be, um, Vicky's going to be shopping now for scarves at the um, thrift shop. Thrift so, shop. Yeah. Well, Helen, thank you. This has been so fun. I just love being around you and <laughs> learning your... The, oh, we always I, have fun. I, we do, yeah. and I am learning so many Aussie words. <laughs> you know, I've got a new language here. <laughs> You'll fit right in when you come visit again. <laughs> That's right. Well, thank you, and thank you for joining us today. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can watch all of our HQ Lives and all of the important information you learn from quilting. Helen, tell us where we can find you so that our, so that our viewers can get information and and all the products that sure. you sell. Okay, well on the internet, um, HelenGodden.com is my web page where I have um, G -O -D -D -E -N. all my products. G O D D E N. <laughs> That's right, <laughs> HelenGarden.com. <laughs> not garden. No, not no. garden. You say it. <laughs> Anyway, and then on Facebook, um, Helen Gordon Quilts, and I post there pretty well every day, and my motto is education and inspiration. So I've always got some quilting, some colour, something to inspire you for your day of quilting. Thank you, thank you. And thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next month with another HQ Live. <laughs>